just want to remind folks the great job that our students at CCCA are doing here tonight. I mean, you and I have the easy job. We're just up here chatting. Right. They're down there on the field, dodging players, getting a shot, switching, mm-hmm. doing the graphics, and uh, getting some good experience, but also more as importantly – providing a quality product for folks to watch and, and listen to. So one good thing that came out of this past week, and I believe it was WWAY, South Columbus was the team of the week, and the highlights that we were able to get from last week's game that the kids had shot, uh, they showed the majority of them, I believe, on their news this week, and Kelly can clarify that one when he, when he makes it back, but... And you know, I turned we, my mic on this time. Yeah. <laughs> I think you muted my mic, Rod. It, it probably was. <laughs> yeah, um, WWAY's Team of the Week was South Columbus. And uh, John Rendleman, uh, we appreciate him coming out and talking to the folks from South Columbus, mm-hmm. talking to the players, and, and actually appreciate him using our footage. So he used right. some footage of uh, South Columbus's win over South Brunswick. So congratulations to the Stallions, the WWAY Team of the Week. Yeah, it's um, you know we're we're thankful that WWAY and WECT have partnered up with us, and yeah. you know and allow us to do what we do, and it's and it's good for the kids, it's yeah, good for the schools, school yeah. system. We talk so much about in education how it's important to have real audiences mm-hmm. and for the students to do real work outside of the classroom, and uh, I'll tell you, having those highlights because every night after the game we edit the highlights and upload them to WWAY and WECT, and they use them on their Friday night shows. And, you know, the students go home and they see that. And, and I think for them it's really rewarding to see that what they're doing is being seen by probably over mm-hmm. 50,000 people just right. on those two stations alone. So uh, very proud of the work that these kids are doing. And every week I think we get better. And with the help from Southeastern Community College now right. getting involved with their broad- broadcasting program, we have um, several representatives from Southeastern here tonight. Uh, the students have some real-time expertise mm-hmm. that they can access and get assistance from. So, you know, things are going really well here for broadcasting program. Just excited. I'm excited about basketball season, too. That's starting now uh, less than eight weeks away. So right. we'll be broadcasting starting that third week of December, the week before Christmas. So, And we'll continue to bring you, I think we've got 12 basketball games planned and too many baseball games to count. A lot of those will be on the radio, but we'll have quite a few of those on video as well. I really and it, I truly hope. I know last year we had big plans to get the baseball in on video, and it just it hit a just a tough time in the semester, to where it just seems like there were so many conflicts going on. But I really hope we can get out there this year and get the video for the baseball. Yeah. Franklin and Mark Council, Franklin Davis, Mark Council do such a wonderful job picking up the audio for us. I hope we can get out and support them with the video this year and. Absolutely, and I think that uh, that's in the works, and I think this year, now that we've got one year of broadcasting under our belt mm-hmm. in terms of doing the Internet and the radio, I think Nick, you know, this upcoming year will be um, even smoother. So, Yeah, I hope so, and um, we will see. But the marching band, I don't know if you can – probably can't hear them in our mics because we are inside, but they are outside. Yeah, doing a great job under the director of, direction of Miss Crystal Harrison. Uh Coming up in a few weeks, we have the North Carolina Yam Festival mm-hmm. happening down here in Tabor City, one of the largest agricultural festivals in the state. And we will have, right now, we have 12 bands scheduled to compete wow. at the, what is called the Stallion Classic, which is the Yam Festival's band competition. So, And uh, Crystal's been doing a great job here, and we see that you know her kids are looking good, and, mm-hmm. and we're, uh, we're excited to see the bands. Of course, whenever we go, I love seeing the bands. That's right. a very important part, just like the cheerleaders or just like anybody who's involved, a uh, dance team at these games. So it's a lot of fun to see. And they brought the shark back. They brought the shark. Playing Jaws with the shark. And we will see some of the local dance teams next. And So if you're watching on the Internet, you are getting to watch this take place. Yeah, and Rod's going to go out and move around a little bit with the, the dance team, right? Yeah, as long as there's cameras out there, that won't be happening. <laughs> <laughs> So we're about a uh, little bit close to half, or through about half time here, and it's been a it's been an interesting game. Uh, South Columbus has once again been they've had the explosive plays just yeah. like we saw last 
saw last week they've put they've had five touchdowns and four offensively, one defensively. And right. They um, they can create some turnovers and they can explode on the ball. But West Columbus has had a big pass play, um, and then they've had some. They have held the Stallions in check on defense. They've had a you know there's a few plays the Stallions have scored, but they have they have forced the punter out. Uh, a lot earlier than we saw the punter last, yeah, last week, week for South Columbus. Did we see so the punter last? I was trying to think if we saw the punter last week. Well, and it may not have been. It may have been a, an over on downs, but you know South Columbus yep. touched it and scored touchdowns. Well, I think there might. I don't know if there was a field goal or not, but the first five times they touched it, they put points yep. on the board, and, and that's you know that's that's tough to uh, the morale of a defense when you, you just can't get them off the field and out of the end zone. Got an update for you. Whiteville 34, East Columbus 0 at the half. And that's our only update right now. Uh, we did have an earlier score of East Bladen 7, Midway 6 in the second quarter, but do not have an update. So we'll keep you posted on that. I want to say hi, too, to uh, we've gotten a few contacts here. Uh, Dr. Dan Strickland listening to us, and uh, you know Ken Buck is listening to us. And want to remind you, if you want to tweet us, you can go to Make a tweet, create a tweet, go to hashtag WCHS, SCHS, all one word, WCHS, SCHS. Tweet with that hashtag, and it'll pop up on our Twitter wall here, and we'll, uh, we'll respond to it. Hey, we'd like a question, maybe some questions. You can tweet us, tweet us some questions. We can call it Stump Rod. That one, there's no challenge in that one. <laughs> uh, some days you can ask me what my name is, I can't even answer it. <laughs> So, got uh, Southside Dance Center out on coming out on the field now, and you know, I think when you're a visiting team, 